All right, well, uh, hope you guys are having a good day. What I want to cover in this video as I show you my 164 custom die cast workshop, I'm working a few of these Matt Kenseth 2008-2009 City Financial cars. Um, this is the one I'm in progress on, at least number 16. He drove the number 16 in 2009 in the Nationwide Series, and um, and then in 2008, the year earlier, he drove uh, also the City Financial uh, car, but it was a number 17. So um, <clears throat> just want to go over that, making four of them, two each, and uh, just kind of want to talk through uh, those cars. I'm just about done with uh, with these 16s, or number 16s, this one. I just finished decaling. Um, it's uh, it's not too complicated. At the end of the day, there's a there's a couple little uh, things I'll I'll go over with it on you or with you on this car. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out. So let me set the camera down and kind of talk to you guys through this. All right. <clears throat> so the way the decal set is, there are a couple pieces that have to go on first. There's this blue and red stripe piece that comes up here, and it angles over this way. And of course, there's one on the other side to make it symmetrical. So those need to go on first, and then you lay the hood decal on top of it. And then once you do that, of course you do the grill, the headlights, and the fusion. So um, I was looking at the pictures of the car, and it looks like there was a gap between the decal and the blue hood. Like a, it was silver through here, but the decals don't let you do that uh, by any stretch. Um, th this is pretty thick blue coming up here. And you can see how big the, the blue decal is. I was considering to trim it so that it could do that. But it's a pretty hard uh, effort because you'd have to trim it in such a way that the, the silver would not need to be shown to be very, um, uh, what I want to say, it would be very uh, consistent spacing between here and here along the sides. And, and that's, that's pretty difficult. So... I just kind of overlooked that and uh, and pushed through and 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 laid it down as as you can see. Um, a couple pieces that are on the sides. Well, let's sh let me show you the back. Um, the back is a little complicated in that this is a a one piece back, and on these cars it has this little uh, fuel uh, overflow uh, sticking out, and the, that that's a pain in the butt I mean it just is um, the decal set doesn't ac uh, account for that so you just kinda have to conform the decal over top of it and then paint it silver and so um, I use a little bit of this micro sole uh, to do that to get the the to get it to set and and kinda you know um, get the decal to stretch around there but it's a pain at the end of the day uh, to get it to look um, really nice and perfect around there. There's a little bit of a, a grouping on the sides because this side decal here, this side decal comes across and, and butts up right against there. There's a little bit of a gap there that shows. But what I do is I trim this decal, this particular one, apart from this one. And, uh, and I'll show you that. The other thing is when you're putting this on, there's these little creases that will show up on the top here that you kind of have to work out and get out as much as best as you can because the decal is being you you want to it naturally wants to droop down and so you kind of have to pull it up and when you pull this side up it crimps up here a little bit and because this is a the the diecast body's uh, kind of the fenders kind of flare out a little bit and so you have to get the decal to kind of uh, go over go over that flare uh, easy. And whenever you see those flares, it, it likes to uh, to kind of crimp 
and uh, and you get these little little pinched edges of the decal showing up and um, and those are just a pain you kind of have to work them and uh, and get them to um, uh, to to fold down in place as best as you can so uh, so yeah but that's pretty much the car not too difficult roof decal goes on pretty pretty easily doesn't quite cover all of this is a little bit of silver sneaking through there on the on there but it's not that not that noticeable so I'm pretty happy with that one other thing on this on these cars is the distance get this the distance between here and here is very thin um, for whatever reason it's super thin on some of these 08, 09 nationwide cars so um, when you go to put the driver signature in there it's usually a little bit bigger than that and so it hangs over just a tad so you just kinda have to watch that but yeah that car is pretty much done gonna let that dry overnight and then I can start uh, putting some clear sealer on it uh, this is the other one I'm making and um, these decals were just recently put on and I don't know if you can tell but the you can see the hood pins st sticking through and when I push down on the decal kinda shows how you can shove the uh, shove the decal over top of the die cast body and get it to conform a little bit better and push out any air bubbles or tiny little uh, bits of water that still remain underneath there um, so yeah so I kinda like to do that as it dries and do my best to to get it to conform uh, to the body as best as it can Um, you can see the back on this one I, I'll show you this side by side but I, I trimmed the decal a little bit more on this one so you can see I, I, I kinda trimmed it down here so it wouldn't come up onto the spoiler it's gotta paint the spoiler black whereas here I just left it and I'll paint over it again but uh, I wanted to see how if I could cut that low and then I wouldn't have to worry about getting the decal to conform to these little dots on the back of this spoiler here so uh, it's just one of the things that you learn you know when you do it the first time there's little pieces that you see that are overlapping that don't need to and you can cut them off when you do it the second time so that's one thing I like to do when I'm making cars I like to do two at a time generally and uh, and so kinda of take those lessons learned and apply it to the next car so All right, so I got this on there, on this side. Looks pretty good. Interestingly enough, the uh, the little NASCAR race car decal that goes here um, was not with the decal set for this uh, 2009 car. So I had to pull pull out of my reserves. Uh, I have a lot of extra decals, and I was able to get some of those and add those in. And just you know, little things here and there that that uh, that you want you want to be able to put together to uh, have the car be exactly as as best as you can, exactly what was driven on the track. So all right, so let's um, move this up just a little bit, and I'll apply this on the side here, and I'll show you uh, some of the difficulty of doing this, especially these big decals that cover most of the side of the car. you can see how this has got to go up here you push that up into place it looks good across here but then it buckles up here and so you just kinda 
shove out the water as best you can. Now, on the decal sheet, I'll show you this. This is on the 2008. You can see how this piece here is um, it's part of that. But I like to cut that edge off. See, I can cut right across here because it's really two separate decals. But that way I can, I can position this bottom one right here on this part of the car to be right into this corner. If I left it on there, it might come out here further and it might not line up correctly with the die cast body. So if I can trim the decals down to the smallest level that makes sense, uh, I try to do that. So. This didn't turn out too bad. There wasn't a whole lot of grouping up there. The fuel door is, is hidden now. So um, I'm going to let this dry and we'll see uh, what I need to do. But I'll probably um, uh, cut into it in order to review or reveal the, the, uh, um, the fuel door. And, um, but it'll be difficult to do that and make it a nice round circle. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. I may just uh, leave it like this and then put some silver over top of that area. Um, not sure, not 100% sure just yet what that's going to what that's going to entail. You can see when I push on it, it definitely shows it shows through um, right there because the decal conforms to the body like that. I was gonna say I I, um, I always wash my hands, you know, before working these deep working these cars. But I think I started wash I wash my hands when I first started that one. Working this one, um, I can already feel kind of the natural oil starting to regenerate on my fingers. And if I were to push, you know, on the on the clear windshield or on the decal, um, it might leave a little residue. So um, I'm I'm in need of washing my hands. And, um, you know, everybody's different, you know, generating their own, you know, oils and stuff at different levels. Um, but um, I got a guy at my church who, um, yeah, he, he's got sweaty palms just all the time. And um, he would have a hard time doing this work. Um, fortunately for me, it's like I just need to wash my hands every, every hour or so. It's not too bad. Uh, just make sure they're clean before I uh, get too far on these cars. So that looks pretty good. This will need to tuck here just a little bit. So I take this little piece here. And now I can I can get it in there like that. Just like that. Like so. And then the last decal for this is this little race car one. Here. Like so.
and then I, I just think a key is just kind of leaving it you know once you've worked a car like this got everything in place don't don't handle it a lot um, you know get it out of your hands get it into a safe place where you're not going to touch it and uh, and and let it dry you know I use like I say I usually like to let it dry overnight before I put any sealer on it and then um, and then I'll do the touch up of the uh, um, I'll do the touch up of the the front gets black across here black along the side skirts black spoiler uh, the um, the roof lines get black so all of that will need to be done once I get a couple coats of clear sealer on it um, this will be the uh, the 20 um, the 2008 and um, it's pretty similar it's a pretty similar paint scheme uh, this is different on the back side uh, the way this looks compared to um, compared to that uh, this is a full blue across there and this is kind of I don't know a couple half circles uh, that go there and then the front is this is going to go on the very front of the car like this so here you have a you can see that there's silver in the middle there this one doesn't have silver it's together and it goes up and then you know you have um, you have it like that so everything else looks pretty much the same so yeah so that's that's pretty easy not too difficult of a car to make um, yeah so once I get done with these these four I gotta do those two um, but I'm dreading doing that orange paint that's kinda why it's been sitting there um, just I don't know I've had some other cars to work on as well so I've kinda um, uh, pushed those a little bit to the side and worked on these other cars as a custom request and that's a custom request too but once I get those two done and these done I've got uh, some other cars that um, that I've got to work some nationwide cars and um, and yeah some Ryan Blaney cars so uh, I've got a, a definitely a steady stream of, uh, of work to do um, probably transition off of some of the Kenseth cars onto these other ones that have been requested uh, not everybody is a Matt Kenseth fan. I've learned so. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, got to do some other ones, including a 2020 Kyle Busch Twix scheme that uh, that I've got to work. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. That one's kind of cool. So, all right, guys, I'm going to continue working this, and um, we'll catch you in the next video. God bless you. Take care.